Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Lethean's Let's Play of Test Pack Please Ignore. Not Let's Play, Server Play. This is the multiplayer server where I am playing with a number of people, mostly from the R Feed the Beast servers subreddit. Last time we left off, I spent basically the whole episode replacing my gear, which I had lost into some lava in the nether. As you can see, since that episode, I've done a couple of things off camera. First of all, I made myself a jetpack from the Mechanism mod. This jetpack uses hydrogen, which I've shown you previously. Someone has set up a hydrogen generator uh, back at the spawn cabin. So I can now fly up without the use of my Staff of Traveling, which is what I had previously been using to gain altitude. The long fall boots, which you saw me make, are coming in even more handy now with that jetpack. You can also see I have, for the most part, lit up this whole area where we are going to make our base. Oh, that's cool. If you look through the beam, you can see all the places where there's liquid or fluid, I suppose. Huh. Okay. So yes, I've lit up the area. Uh, you might also be wondering what these blue lines are. I have just begun digging out a place where we can put tools and chests and such. And I was using this, which is a landmark from Buildcraft, to show myself where the center of this column is. So you can see here, we can take a landmark. It's a lot like a redstone torch. In fact, it's made by taking a redstone torch and adding a piece of lapis on top. If we place it down and give it a redstone signal, it will send these blue beams out every direction for 64 blocks which it can be really helpful when you're trying to build in a straight line or you need to know where something is from under the ground. So I did a little bit of digging here. I just cleared a little space and made a little hole, put some chests here, and I also raided a nearby village and took some of their Tinker's Construct tables. Um, we might look into Tinker's Construct a little bit today. I think that'll be a good way to start uh, because there are some tools there that will allow us to clear large areas of land. Uh, but yes, I am going to start with this space. You can see I've moved a lot of stuff here. I went exploring a little bit and grabbed some or found some extra things. Uh, you can also see I found this, the Broken Hammer of Mol sorry, the Broken Hammer of Thor, Mjolnir. Uh, this is pretty cool. It's from, I think, Electromagic Tools? Yeah. As it is, if I right-click... Oh. Oh. did warn me quite explicitly not to right click. I thought that is because it was going to hit me with lightning, not that it was going to fly off into the distance and explode. Wow, I was really happy to have found that, but I suppose we will have to find another someday, because it is gone now. Yep. Well, that was incredibly silly of me. Oh well, we won't have the infrastructure to actually purify the thing for quite some time. You might also note that one of these torches is not like the others. This is a magnum torch from Extra Utilities. Magnum torches prevent any mobs from spawning in, I believe, a 64 block radius from the torch. So 64 blocks in every direction, even if it is dark, 
you will not spawn any mobs. Which is great. It means we don't really have to worry about them spawning on all these little crevices and such and falling down on us. Let's just note... Okay, so we're at Y level 83 here. The top here... Okay, it's like 40 blocks up. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these further away high bits, like this one over here, is outside of the range. Um, but that's okay, because we have it all lit up as well. So we're not going to get creepers dropping on our head, which is great. For those of you who are familiar with the mod, it actually is kind of a lot of effort to get a magnum torch. And I'm going to show you what I did. The most important thing is that you need some potions. To get the Magnum Torch, you need potions of regeneration and potions of healing. And to get those, you need to go to the Nether to get a brewing stand. So I went to the Nether and explored a little bit, and I found this Nether Fortress. So that's actually some chests in here where I got a great deal of that gear that I was showing you as well. But we now have access to this nether fortress. This is actually the reason I made the jetpack, uh, because I did not want to use the sometimes laggy wand of travel to fly about in the nether. But I kill blazes until... Oh, now I have a wrath shard too. That might someday be useful, but not at the moment. But yes, killed blazes until I got a blaze rod, made a potion stand, which I currently have back at the spawn hut so everyone can use it. Speaking of the spawn hut... Actually, I didn't do anything around the spawn hut, so... Yeah, I'll leave that dangling... whatever thread there. <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't do much of anything there except put a potion stand there, which I just described to you. As such, not worth heading back and showing you. But I think the first thing we have to do this episode is a little bit of terraforming here. So my vision for what the base will look like eventually is to have much of this remain open, I think I'll put a wall of some sort around the top of this sort of plateau valley hybrid. I don't know what to call this. It's kind of a valley because it's surrounded by high peaks. It's kind of a plateau because it's up off the ground on a hill. I'm not sure. Anyway, I think I want this to remain open and largely natural feeling. So what I plan on doing is putting walls between some of these peaks. And we will even, I think, expand out all the way up here. So we'll take over really this whole uh, hilltop. And then in the mountains themselves, we'll put all sorts of rooms. Is this also from Mjolnir? That's very weird. It looks like the, the hammer traveled backwards as well. Okay. Well, we'll roll with it. Oh, and it knocked out a bunch of torches. <laughs> I don't entirely know what's going on here. It looks like it kind of randomly exploded in a pattern around me. Hmm. 
rather than specifically targeting where it it threw. It seems very strange to me. I am very sad that I did that. Oh well. So, as far as terraforming goes, I think what we need to do is set up those walls I talked about. And additionally, we will want to flatten out a lot of this ground. I want it to be natural-ish. I want it to still be grass cover with an open roof. But I want it to be easy to run across and also relatively flat so we can put sort of mini structures, a, a fountain or a little manicured garden sort of area all in here. My buildings often have a courtyard, which is where I try to center everything. And I think right here is going to be the effective center of our base. So what that means is that I will probably clear a small space underground. This is where our power generation will be. It also means this is where we are going to put our eventual storage system, which I believe will be applied energistics because I love AE systems. I love the fact that it automatically sorts things for me. Oh, our cherry grew. How lovely. So this is going to be really the hub where we spend most of our time, and everything else is going to be off to the sides. We'll clear out rooms all in these mountains, and that will be where we put machines and things of that sort. It It's going to be quite a project, uh, especially since I'm not building it myself. You know, normally I will find a wide open flat area and build the base myself, and then I can very easily know where I need to run cables and things of that nature. This is going to be uh, an interesting challenge because we will have to run the cables through the natural features. I have never used it before, but I think we're going to make good use of Ender IO. Uh, this is a mod that adds some cables for power transfer and item transfer and all sorts of other things, which is going to help us reduce the footprint of our cables that we have to run. Um, I think, at least to start though, I'm going to do some work off camera. I'm going to level out this terrain. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not going to start that way because my puny iron shovel is really subpar for clearing large swaths of land. I want something that can do it in moments rather than the long periods of time it would take to use a single shovel. So we are going to look a little bit into Tinker's Construct, as I promised we might. So I'm going to show you an example here, and then we'll probably go back to the spawn hut where there is a tool forge, or sorry, no, a smeltery which will allow us to use metal instead of other things. But I'll show you in general how this works. Uh, first I'm going to turn off that. There. Okay. So, all of uh, Tinker's Construct starts with stencils. To get a stencil, you can take, I believe the recipe is, can be four, no, not four sticks. Okay, there we go. There's the recipe to get a blank pattern. If you put a blank pattern into the stencil table, you can choose a number of different patterns. for different tools. So we are going to choose the excavator head pattern. And we can 
put it in this pattern chest. Now, the pattern chest holds patterns. The part builder uses those patterns to build the parts of a tool. Every tool has multiple parts. So, if we put an excavator head pattern there, put some cobblestone in there, we can get a stone excavator head. We will also need a couple of other patterns, actually. To make an excavator. An excavator is like a shovel in that it clears diggable items like dirt, gravel, sand, but it does it in a 3x3 three three area. The other things we will need to make an excavator, I believe, are a tough rod pattern and a tough binding pattern. So if we make a tough binding and a tough rod, we may now be able to go over to the tool station. Ah, I have made a mistake already. The tool station is a basic variant of a workbench that allows you to put together your tools to make, sorry, put together your parts to make the tool that you've got the parts for. So you click on the tool you want to make, then you add the parts here and take it out over here. The problem I have, though, is that as a basic version, the tool station can't make an excavator. To do that, you need to update to the tool forge. And for that, we'll need some of the resources that are at spawn. So the first thing to note is that there is already a tool forge here at spawn, uh, although we will want our own. So to make a tool forge, we need four blocks of iron, or any metal actually, and seared brick. Let's see first if there is any seared brick here. Otherwise, we will have to make it. Oh, here we go. Three seared bricks and two blocks of iron. It was four blocks of iron, wasn't it? It was. I'm going to have to bring some iron back to spawn, but I ha have some ore in my chest at home. I just need to remember to bring it here. There we go. So, if we take our four blocks of iron, our three seared bricks, and a tool station, we can make a tool forge. It'll work like this one. And you can see, now we can select the excavator. Ah, and I forgot one piece that is important for making the excavator, and that is the plate. So, do we have a stencil table here? We do. Do we have a pattern? Okay. We even have a large plate pattern already. So, we can make a large stone plate. Now we can select excavator. Well, that is silliness. And put all the pieces in and get a stone excavator.
but, and this is probably obvious, stone tools are not as good as metal tools. They are generally slower and less durable. So though we now have this stone excavator, I think I will spend a little bit of time here with the smeltery making an even better excavator. To do that, we will need to consult one of the books added by Tinker's Construct, Materials and You. I believe this is, nope, this is the wrong book. Oh, but we can probably make the right book with this. So if we take this book and put it in our crafting inventory, we will get volume two of Materials and You, which is the one I wanted. So this will tell you not only all the pieces required for each tool and what they're good for, but it also shows you the materials traits. The material traits are unique to every material you can use to make parts in Tinker's Construct. And depending upon which part you make with them, you will get different bonuses. So for example, if we make a handle out of wood, the handle modifier is 1.0. This would mean that it doesn't actually alter the durability of the tool, which will be decided solely by the material we use to make the working part of it, the pick head or the axe head. If we use it to make that head, it will have a dirty durability of 59, which is very low. It'll also show you the mining speed if we use that as the head material, the level of thing we can mine. So if we use wood, we can only mine stone. That's the most, uh, the sorry, the hardest thing we can mine. And it'll show you if it's used to make a weapon, what the damage is going to be. In this case, nothing. Stone, which is what we just made the entire tool out of, has a durability of 131, but a handle modifier of 0.5, which means its durability of that tool we just made is only 65, which is actually very low. We would have been better served with a handle modifier of 1, that is using wood to make the handle. Mining speed is 4, which is relatively low. And the other important thing is that it has a trait. Some materials have traits which add an extra benefit. So the material trait of stone is stone bound, which means the lower the durability of the tool gets, the faster it will mine, which is nice. But we can do better. If we use iron, our mining speed is going to go up to six and we will get the reinforced material trait. Reinforced means we will get additional durability on our tool. If we use an iron handle as well, our durability will go up to 325, which is pretty good. Let's look through this and see if there is anything that we can easily get that'll mine faster or modify our tool in a meaningful way. Obsidian will give us reinforced level three. That's pretty nice. That means our tool will be even more durable. But the durability, the base durability of obsidian is quite low. Some of these metals are quite nice, but require us to get a lot of different metals and, and make an alloy in the smeltery. Netherrack is better than stone. 
blue slime is quite good, although we don't, have, for a handle modifier especially, although we don't have access to it. We can also use paper. The advantage of paper is that it adds, it's got the writable modifier, which adds the ability to add extra traits to your tool. Let's see, I think we might be best served though. Bronze would be good. If we've got some bronze, that might be the best way to go. Because I don't want to waste any of our steel on this, even though it's going to give us a higher mining speed. Okay, here's what we'll do. Let's look to see if we have any bronze. We do. So, we will need eight bronze for an excavator head. The other things we needed were the rod, which we want a good handle modifier for. So iron has a 1.3 modifier, blue slime has a 2 modifier, but would take some, some getting. 1.3, we'll probably just use an iron handle then. Yeah. And then we will use a paper binding, which will add extra modifiers for future use. If we can find any reed here. And we'll use an obsidian plate, which will make it more durable. Okay, there are plenty of reed out here. Let's not waste our time. Okay, so first, let's see if we have an excavator head here. We do not, so we will need to make an excavator head casting as well. I will show you how to make a cast in a moment, but we can start melting down our bronze. So when you put a material in the smeltery by clicking here on the controller, it will slowly begin to melt. Once it melts, it will become a liquid that will end up here. While we are waiting for that, we are also going to need to make a cast. Okay, I think for that we need Mighty Smelting. This shows you the different alloys you can make. The alloy we need is aluminum brass. So we need three aluminum to one copper. three aluminum, one copper. We can now put these into the smeltery and they will melt as well. You can see aluminum actually melts rather quickly and that will allow us to get aluminum brass. Now the important thing is so we will need another excavator head in order to actually make the cast. To make a cast, we will take this excavator head, place it here in the casting table, and we 
once our bronze has melted, sorry, our aluminum brass, that is, we will tell it to go to the bottom of the smeltery by clicking on it, which I just did. And once this copper ingot melts, we will get some aluminum brass, and we will then be able to pour it out over our excavator head to make a cast of it. And that will allow us to then pour the bronze into the cast to make the excavator head that we are going to use. So if we wait here for just a moment longer, we will see that the copper melted. This becomes aluminum brass which because of this redstone clock actually gets automatically poured. <laughs> it's actually pouring all four ingots worth, so it just made four excavator cast heads, or sorry, head casts. That's okay, we can melt those back down and make different tools in the future. So it is now going to pour out all eight of our ingots into this cast and make our excavator head. In the meantime, we will also need a tough tool rod. I am fairly certain I saw, okay, tough rod. That's gonna cost us three of whatever material we wanna use. We want it to use iron. So we will take three additional iron here. Take that cast out, put the iron in. Put this cast in. And now we can take our head. And when all of this iron gets melted down, it will make our tough cast for us. In the meantime, I am going to make our tool binding. If we come over here and get the tough binding pattern. We can... Oh, I think we need more paper, actually. Yes, take our tool binding of paper now. The only other thing we'll need that I think I left back at our base is the obsidian. So I will wait for this iron to melt and then go back to the base and show you the final bit of putting it together. In the meantime, I will get the ability to transform into a zombie pigman while he is away from his friends. Okay, I will see you in just a minute. Okay guys, I finally got that obsidian plate. Took a while, but here is our tool. The excavator. It's got quite a bit of durability. Hmm. The mining speed is only 2.8. That doesn't seem right to me. I wonder... What is the mining speed on this one? 1.6 eight. Bronze was supposed to have a mining speed of seven. I wonder if it counts as being mixed with the obsidian. No, both of those have a mining speed of seven. You know what I think it is? I think that these tools that dig more than one block have reduced mining speeds. 
I can't imagine. I think that these mining speeds might get averaged, but even if that's the case, it should still be 7. So I'm not sure what's going on here. It, it's probably just because it's an excavator and not, say, a shovel. Anyway, now we have our excavator. And so we can do something like this and take out a whole huge chunk of the ground. That said, I think I may have lied to you yet again. I had promised you previously that last episode I would start working on our base. Then we died and I had to spend the episode getting back our gear. I promised you this episode that we'd start working on our base. But this just took basically the whole time allotted. Well. We have the tools now, and a lot of what I plan to do first is terraforming that I think I'll do off camera. So just to remind you, I'll even out the surface and probably build some walls around the perimeter. I'm not sure what material I will use for those yet, um, but it's easy enough to swap out materials once we get a little bit into thumbcraft, which is something I definitely plan to do. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned a little bit about Tinker's Construct, if you didn't already know how it works. Uh, let me know if you like these more tutorial-style episodes, where I sort of show you a little bit about how the mods work, or whether you've got a good working knowledge of them and want me to just do them and move on. If you care either way, leave a comment to let me know. I will see you next time.